We can also use polar coordinates integration to find area of regions. And so here's our formula for area and polar coordinates. The area of a closed boundary region R and the polar coordinate plane is you find the area by doing the double integral over R of R dr d theta. And so let's just point out here that this formula makes sense here. You know, when, when we want to compute area, we integrate the constant function one, and so here we're integrating, the integrand here is one times r. You know, that r just always gets thrown in. Uh, so, so, so this is our formula. Be before, we'll do some more complicated examples with this formula in, future, in, in, in our follow-up video to this. But let's start off with some very, very basic, easy examples just to kind of verify that this makes sense. So, uh, find the area of a circle of radius r centered at the origin. So, uh, obviously, this is a very easy question. We, we, we know that, you know, here is our circle of radius r. We know the area needs to be pi times r squared. But let's solve this problem using polar coordinates uh, integration and we'll see that everything checks out. So for this region, let's see r, we, okay we need bounds on theta and r, little r here. So little r, the radius can be anything from zero to big R. And theta, we are going to do a full loop around the circle. So our natural bounds are zero to two pi. Okay, so this is our, this is our, our uh, bounds here. And so our area is going equal. The integral of theta runs from zero to two pi. And uh, r runs from zero to big R of r dr d theta. Okay, what do we get? And we do the integration here. Theta runs zero to two pi. Uh, oops, uh, r goes to r squared over two and we find its antiderivative, plug in zero and big R. And this will give us big R squared over two minus zero. D theta, big R squared, this is a constant. And so antiderivative of this will be big R squared over two times theta, plug in theta from zero to two pi. And what do we end up with? R squared over two times two pi, and yes. This is exactly what we'd expect, pi r squared. Okay, so, so, so that is one warm-up example. I want to do a second warm-up example. Find the area of the circle r is equal to two cosine theta. So I think just a couple videos ago we uh, dealt with this. This is a circle of radius one that is centered not at the origin, but at the point one, zero. Okay, so what do we do here? Now we need bounds on theta and r. So theta, theta can be anything. From here, theta is equal to zero. If theta goes negative, this is fine. Until we hit down here, this is theta is negative pi over two. So theta runs from negative pi over two all the way up here to pi over two. Okay, r, how about r? So for a fixed value of theta, the smallest r can be is zero. And the biggest r can be here is when we hit this circle out here, and this is r is equal to two cosine theta. So okay, uh, our area using this formula right here, we're going to integrate 
Theta runs from negative pi over two to pi over two. R runs from zero to two cosine theta of r dr d theta. Okay, uh, what happens now? We end up with, uh, we end up with theta, okay, we still have this here, negative pi over two to pi over two. And then antiderivative r is r squared over two. Plug in zero and two cosine theta, d theta. Okay, uh, this is going to give us theta from negative pi over two to pi over two. When we plug in zero, we'll just subtract out of zero. Plugging in two cosine theta will give us two cosine squared theta d theta. So all we have to do now, let me just recopy that. Two cosine squared theta d theta. All we have to do now is integrate this uh, antiderivative of cosine squared theta is, um, hold on one second, uh, antiderivative of cosine uh, squared theta, uh, two cosine squared theta is going to be um, theta plus uh, one half sine of two theta. Plug in theta from negative pi over two to pi over two. So we end up with pi over two plus one half times sine of two times pi over two is sine of zero uh, minus negative pi over two plus one half sine of, oops, not sine of uh, zero, sine of pi, but that's going to be zero. Um, sine of negative uh, two times negative pi over two is negative pi. And so that is zero, that is zero. Pi over two minus negative pi over two is pi. And yes, that checks out here. This is a circle of radius one. Pi times one squared is, is pi. Okay, so, so those are two kind of, let's just make sure that the formula works. We'll do another more interesting example in the next video.